We know that centuries ago the city gave name to Cologne. But what about today? Well, we're gonna find out from Holger, one of the new generation of perfume makers here in Cologne. in the pretty Belgian quarter and we're gonna visit Holger in his store and have a chat. We're here at Duft Kunsthandlung. <laughs> Excuse my German. And Holger, what does it mean? Yeah, Duft Kunsthandlung translates to perfume art shop and my idea was to present a new kind of perfume mm -hmm. in a different way, like a different kind of art, like paintings or music. To me, perfume is a kind of art. How did you get into the perfume business in the first place? Yeah, well, uh, my, my passion for perfume arose around the age of 17, 18 mm. years. After my, my high school, I well thought about uh, getting a perfumer, but it mm. was, uh, well, you, you have to have uh, six years of training. And then wow. you don't know, will you ever make something like this here, or will right. you just make the perfume for the next washing powder? <laughs> <laughs> so it was, uh, I wasn't, wasn't sure if right. I'm getting where I wanted to be. So you ended up doing? I studied pharmacy, All right. and yeah. I was working as a pharmacist for almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. But that love and passion for fragrance never got out of my mind. So right. yeah, I, uh, then about two years ago, I sold my pharmacies and said, mm -hmm. well, I'm in an age, if I want to start something new, I have to do it now. I won't mm -hmm. do it in five or 10 years. Mm -hmm. And this is when I, when I started opening my Duftkunsthandlung. So what's the path to becoming a perfume maker? If, if you do it traditionally, you mm -hmm. will go to a school for several years or right. you will go to industry because industry, they teach mm -hmm. their own perfumers oh, that work do. in the companies later on. But a lot of people do exactly what you did, go from pharmaceutical sector to perfumes. Yeah, many of the traditional mm -hmm. brands are founded by pharmacists at that time. Oh, oh yeah. is that right? Hugo, can you tell us about the state of uh, perfume business today in Cologne? Yeah, well, there are like three kind of different branches of perfume mm -hmm. business in Cologne today. There are the very traditional houses, like mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. best known is probably 4711. Right. The one that was, was much earlier is mm -hmm. uh, Farina Gegenüber, mm -hmm. which was is, is today speaking, the, the founder and the inventor mm -hmm. of uh, Eau de Cologne. Mm -hmm. And they still keep their very traditional way and they are famous all over the world and they mm -hmm. are mostly well selling to tourists. Okay. Then, of course, uh, as in many other big cities, there are the chain perfumeries. They mm -hmm. are selling to the mass market. They right. sell to lots of people, lots of different stuff most of the designer brands and uh, well I found out that during the last few years uh, the different fragrances and the new launch fragrances of the mm. designer brands they smell very very similar. Why is that? Well they, they don't invent the perfumes uh, having a storyboard they, mm. they do uh, market research what yeah. people want okay. and they put that they in the bottle yeah, because yeah, yeah. they want to sell huge amounts. I see, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there are, uh, there's an upcoming crowd of people, they want to like um, embrace the individuality. Mm -hmm. They want to smell different. They, sm want, they, they, they are fed up with everyone smelling the same. Mm -hmm. That's the branch that you cater to. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Have you ever regretted becoming a perfume maker? No, not today. <laughs> because, well, I, I tried, uh, I, I did like a workshop uh, mm. to create my own perfume and then I saw how, how really complicated it is mm. to get all the, the, the um, evolution of a perfume right. in, yeah. into the bottle. It's, mm. it's uh, really hard work. And to be a perfumer, you know, it, uh, only have to, to, to do the, the, the making, so, so the process, mm -hmm. like oh, what you call it, we call it handwork, like craftsmanship. Craftsmanship, yeah. yes. Yeah. You do not only need uh, the craftsmanship, but you also need like a kind of artish, mm -hmm. art, 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 
creativity, yeah, creativity, yeah, yeah, yeah. inspiration, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. okay. So the, these two have to come together to make a great yeah. perfume. Yeah, and basically, you said earlier, if I understood right, there is a good reason why this stuff costs so much. So much work and knowledge goes uh, yeah. in, into producing these little bottles. And some of these uh, perfumes, uh, until they're ready to, to be sold, it mm -hmm. takes uh, a year or one and a half years in process, in making, in refining the formula wow. until it finally is in the bottle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and I wanted to say that uh, another part of the price mm -hmm. is that these are small brands that mm -hmm. like they do, it's handcrafted. Yeah, material. Yeah, yeah. They they fill their bottles by hand. So this is uh, this costs much more if, than than right. doing this in yeah, industrial yeah, yeah, yeah. scale. It's not mass produced. And, yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. How do you make it feel when you made your first perfume? It's interesting because you have an idea without knowing what you're gonna get later on. Um, I found out over the years that every perfumer has its own style. Right. So so if you if you um, try different perfumes from the same perfumer, even if it's from different brands, mm. you will like get an idea of his style, of his handwriting mm. in the perfume. So the first step you do is like you have an idea of what you want to express in mm -hmm. your fragrances mm -hmm. and then you're looking for a perfumer to translate this idea into mm -hmm. a perfume. Mm -hmm. So and, and many perfumers are like good at craftsmanship, but they are less good like in having ideas. So what did you want to express with your first perfume? Well, we, we launched three perfumes uh, mm -hmm. in, in our first series and we wanted to, to bring old traditional healing herbs that are well known mm -hmm. in Europe to a modern state of like well-being which sorts of follows the original concept from uh, Farina right because uh, the, the inventor of yeah. the perfume he said that's what I read I don't know what he yeah. said but <laughs> yeah. he said that he, it makes him feel uh, in a certain way, it makes him feel like a morning in southern Italy or something. Yeah, yeah. So your idea is sort of along the lines mm -hmm. of how it all started here in Cologne. Yeah, because uh, fragrances, uh, they have like a direct connection to emotions and pictures right. in your mind. You're, you're seeing and hearing lots of stuff throughout the day, but your brain filters a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Your brain can't filter smells. So smells, right. they yeah. provoke a direct reaction mm -hmm. like an emotion or a picture in your mm -hmm. mind because your brain uh, like processes smells mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. That it always puts an emotion or a picture or a surrounding in it. Mm -hmm. How would you like my brain to react to your perfume? Well, ideally it would be uh, you feeling uplifted, you feeling uh, better. Oh, I need that. Or, or you yeah. feel uh, like like uh, like putting yourself in a blanket to warm you. So we have uh -huh. different fragrances that appeal to different like feelings. Feelings, yeah. yeah. You consult people here by appointment. Yeah. Let's just say, how how does it work? How would you consult me, for example? Yeah, it, it starts different on the type of customer. Mm -hmm. So so my first question would be, do you have any like favorite fragrances? Or mm -hmm. is there like a raw material or an ingredient that you prefer, that you like very much in different fragrances, mm -hmm. or one you don't like at all? Mm -hmm. um, and if you are like very new to perfumery, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to ask you to how you want to feel with your new fragrance. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. want to feel uplifted? Do you feel mm -hmm. warmed and embraced? And this is yeah. a, a starting point. Yeah. Well, I'll put you in trouble. I have no idea what I want. Yeah. I have no idea what I like. <laughs> so what do we do now? No problem. We we gonna try different perfume families. Okay. And see if there is a resonance with mm -hmm. you. So so mostly I I look in the people's faces when they start sniffing wow. the fragrance strip, mm -hmm. and the the, mm -hmm. the facial mm -hmm. expressions tell very much if there is an emotion. So so did you try fragrances in the past, and there was something yeah, that yeah. you didn't like at all? I don't use them much because. It's not just the fact that they all uh, uh, smell the same, 
They all smell sugary to me. I don't like that. Okay. Yeah, that's very interesting because we, we don't have a, a common language when mm -hmm. we are talking about perfumes or smells. Mm -hmm. My part is to find out what exactly do you mean with sugary. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> I have no idea. There, you know, there but to many, me, it smells sugary. Yeah, there are many fragrances that, that uh, use my tool today, which mm. is a, a, making the sweet like vanilla, caramel, sugar smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's because, I don't like that. Yeah, and it's because you are, don't want to offend you, you are of a certain age and uh, yeah, I'm most, 28. Yeah, and most of the designer um, brands are focusing on like a new group of right. customers that buy their stuff. So you sort of have a, a general idea of what I don't like now. Yeah. So how do we move from here? Here I would show you like very distinctive like uh, perfumes from different olfactive families. Mm -hmm. One I would probably start with uh, mm -hmm. in your case is like the Fouchere type, oh. which is uh, based uh, mainly on lavender. Mm -hmm. And it's a very like classic perfume mm -hmm. style. There are modern varieties too, but you will all I don't like immediately... Lavender. You don't like lavender? I don't. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> yeah, like no problem. It. I'm a difficult customer. <laughs> no, no. The, the problem is when people yeah. hear lavender, they have a certain idea of how lavender smells. It's like uh -huh. uh, like yeah. like those calming pillow sprays. And lavender <laughs> in a fouchere doesn't smell like that at all because it's in a complex with uh, other things like patchouli, yeah. like the oh, bergamot. And I this see. gives a totally right. new yeah. uh, character to the. Well, I'm willing to give it a try. Okay. That's <laughs> it. I've been consulted. Yeah. So what do I do now? Just take the strip, put it close to your nose. You can well, smell my nose. creation. <laughs> this is very nice. Okay. I like this. <laughs> but is this the lavender one? Yeah. This is the lavender yeah, This is the lavender smell This is a full share, yeah. That's what I said because it's, it's well blended with other ingredients. It is. Music yeah. and perfume have very much in common. Mm -hmm. And also like in music there are different like styles. This is more the classic orchestra stuff, okay. but I have very like pop art like in your face fragrances All too. Right. It's, it, does, it is like an orchestra. To, to me the, the quality criteria for a good fragrance is that it evolves. And many mm. of the designer fragrances today are like tuned, they are very one note. Mm. But with an orchestra you have like ups and downs, you have like mm. variations mm. in the fragrance. Yeah, and this yeah, is why, yeah. These, yeah, why yeah. these fragrances evolve and they change over time. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, so perfume is like music. Yeah, it has um, similarities. I tell you what, I like blues. Yeah, we'll find a fragrance for that too. Well, let's do it. It's bluesy. It is. Hmm. So that's what consulting makes it very interesting for me mm. because every one of my customers is different and it's my task to find out what your perfect fragrance is. It smells like a guitar. Yeah, like you poke your nose in the guitar hole and sniff it. But if you like violins, I have another fragrance too. Violins? Yeah, I love yeah. violins. I like <laughs> blood all over the place. I love violins. Oh, uh, this is a violin, yeah? Yeah, it's yeah. the wood, it's the, the lacquer. But lighter than, 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 than yeah. the blues one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. True. So, yeah, you could say these are more like mm. male fragrances. But at all, a perfume has no gender. Mm. I say wear what, what you feel like. All right. Yeah. What, what fits your emotions, your feelings. And if a perfume says, well, this is men or women, it's mostly marketing. Because it I makes see. it easier yeah. for the customer to pick his fragrance exactly. and it makes it easier for the personal in the chain perfumeries to pick the fragrance yeah, 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 yeah. to the gender. Yeah. So, orchestra. Blues, violin. This is fun. I mean, I really enjoy this day. When we designed our own brand, mm -hmm. uh, it's called Olfactive Pharmacy, mm -hmm. we really had the well being of our mm -hmm. customers in mind. So we mm -hmm. wanted them to feel like uplifted or embraced. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we we took the bottle design from the classic uh, pharmacist bottles. Like okay. the idea behind this fragrance, uh -huh. it's called Telia, which translates in linden or linden blossom. Mm -hmm. We had the idea of those uh, cold winter days mm -hmm. when you like had a, a flu and mm -hmm. uh, you made a linden blossom tea with mm -hmm. honey. And we wanted to, to put this comfort into the bottle. That sounds great. Sounds great. Thank you. <laughs>